Bum, 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 bum. All right. That is We Are The Champions, and that is for a reason, because we are going to crown who are the top 10 best magic product releases of 2020. If you don't know who I am, I am Fiddle and Johnny, and this is my Fiddle channel, and of course, Magic Reviews. So we're gonna do a roundup of the best products of 2020. Once I've actually tested, I've used, and uh, let you know what I think. So stick around for a really fun, packed, year-end uh, look at those products. We'll see you in a second. Welcome everyone to my end of year special. Um, I am just, I've been looking forward to doing this video for a while and doing a wrap up of the best 10 products of the year. Look, I'm all gussied up because it's a fancy day. Why don't I go ahead and take this off? Let's get a little, little more relaxed and settle in to what are the top 10. So before I go into the top 10, I just want to first say thank you to uh, all of my viewers who have been faithfully watching every review that I put out. It is really appreciated. And if you're brand new here, I'm glad that you found the channel and I hope that you'll keep coming back. I hope you'll consider subscribing and liking. And since I know you love top 10 best of year, go ahead and hit that like button right now, uh, letting me know that you like the top 10s. So um, let's go ahead and just jump right in. I'm gonna start off with um, just some things for you to know. I am only doing on my top 10 the products that I purchased this year and that I reviewed. These are products that um, you know, I didn't get every single product under the sun. I tried to purchase ones that I thought I would like over the year. A lot of them were not that good, to be honest. Others were okay. Uh, and some were really uh, real workers, ones that I could, could use in a professional setting. So uh, it really ran the gamut. But there are some products that you'll go, why didn't Fiddle and Johnny include that one in his reviews? And it's simply because I probably didn't purchase it this year. Um, or have it sent to me for review. So you can go and look at all of the different reviews that I did uh, over the course of the year to see if it was something that I did review. So um, I'm gonna start off then with my honorable mentions. In the honorable mentions here, none of these are sort of like ranked uh, in any sort of order. They're ones that I really liked. I think they're worthy of consideration, but they didn't quite meet the top 10. So the first one was Decide by Chris Webb. I think I have it over here somewhere. So Decide by Chris Webb. I really loved this product. Uh, and I like a lot of products that are in this vein in terms of a prediction card uh, that is placed in advance and a uh, spectator freely chooses any card and it turns out that the uh, selected card uh, is the uh, prediction card. What I like about this is it is a gimmick that I really liked. So anyway, worth considering, it's decided by Chris Webb. Um, I like a lot of products in this vein, and so I wanted to include it. You can go check out the full review to see if it's something for you. AdSense also made uh, this. It was a late entry uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, I really loved it from uh, the way that it is structured in that it is about subliminal messages and how you might be influenced by subliminal messages. So I liked the routine on this. I liked the quality of the cards and the gimmicks that are provided. And so I decided I would include AdSense in there. For me, it fits really well with my character and what I would do. All right, the next one is, uh, again, these are all honorable mentions, but they are, for the uh, reality is they're workers. And that would be D4, D4M. D4M is a new, torn and restored uh, release uh, by Matthew Wright. The thing uh, that I would mention for folks, this may not be for everybody because it might be a little challenging uh, at first to sort of learn um, the choreography on the tear and restored. The nice thing about this torn and restored effect is that it's torn and restored, but it's, it's a mismatched uh, restore. So, but it looks really cool. Uh, Matthew Wright, I think did a really great job on that one as well. Um, I have to say one of my, I don't know if this is really a worker, but I wanted to let you know about it. It is Tenyo's 
tweezers. All right, so this is sort of gimmicky and whatnot, but at the end of the day, I really, really liked it. Uh, it struck me as a funny sort of goofy type of an effect, but at the end of the day, I find myself performing it online uh, with folks and uh, in virtual settings, but you can perform it, uh, and I like it that way because I can control my angles really well, um, and it's great for social media, and uh, you should go check out the grossest use of Tenyo's magic tweezers uh, in my feed and share that with everybody. I, it was fun to do. Anyway, just thought this was fun. Uh, and it is based upon Mario Lopez's, I think it was called Chinese tweezers. Uh, this is a gimmicked version versus a uh, total um, sleight of hand version. Anyway, fun makes the honorable mentions this year. Um, <coughs> excuse me, Pick Me by Michael Chatlin. Uh, Pick Me by Michael Chatlin here. Um, this was, again, from a gimmick point of view, a car, um, starts off with a routine where the card um, a deck is sealed. Oh, and you actually have the spectator initial and seal the deck. They from um, go ahead and then pick a card, and in the sealed deck, it turns out their card is in there, <coughs> and it's uh, easy to load into this deck within seconds. And so I really liked the gimmick and uh, the way that was done and um, classic sort of Michael Chatlin style. And of course, I had to include Wallet by Nicholas Lawrence. Um, it didn't quite make my top 10, but it is worthy of consideration. I don't think this is for everybody. I think it's for more for workers uh, and really good creative types. If you're creative, this wallet provides a lot of opportunity to think about what you might want to create uh, with this in terms of, it can do a lot of stuff, but it takes a little bit of skill, a little bit of practice, uh, but worthy of consideration if you're a worker. You can do card to wallet, card to impossible location. You can do predictions with it. You can do transformations. You can do switches. There's a lot of possibilities with this and it's super small, which is nice. It can be everyday carry and is worthy of note. All right, so I'm doing a lot of honorable mentions. I'm doing them just because, you know what? There's a lot of products that come out over the course of the year and they may not rise to the level of your attention. And I think these are worthy of cons uh, consideration. So um, I'll also just real quickly mention uh, Mario Lopez's Instagram session. Uh, Instagram sessions, they were the best when it came to social media and more importantly, they were really good as it's related to thinking and creativity. Uh, I loved sort of getting from him a master class on creativity and how he approaches creativity. So it was worth the purchase of that alone, totally aside from the um, effects that he teaches on there, which are all really geared towards um, Instagram. If you've ever gone to Mario Lopez's uh, Instagram page, uh, you'll learn a lot of what you see on there. Not Mario Lopez from uh, TV and Saved by the Bell, but from Spain, uh, an amazing uh, performer. So um, <coughs> I wanted to point out that I was going to do um, something on watches this year, uh, but I didn't get any new watches, but there's one watch out there that nobody knows about. But if you know about it, you know it's an awesome watch. Uh, and I just want to call out to uh, the folks, uh, Chris and Rory, on the watches that you do that nobody knows about. They're really awesome and not a release this year, but um, just a little tip of the hat to you guys. All right, let's get into 2020 top 10 releases. Now, these are in no particular order, uh, but I have ranked like my bottom five didn't make it into the top five, essentially. Uh, but when I look at my top five, they're in no particular order and the same sort of thing with my uh, bottom five, but they are kind of, for me, in, in a quasi ascending order. I hope that helps. I'm gonna start off with a book. And I swear, I'm not sure, um, there's a lot of awesome books out this year, but a book that you may have missed and I really want folks to consider is Resigned to Miracles um, by Peter Groening. This is um, such a good book with essentially one 
new method for getting a duplicate signed card where your participant doesn't know about it. And I think, again, I'll go back to folks who are creative. Um, this is a, a method that folks don't know about. Um, Peter has sort of been doing this for quite a while. It has not been out there in the magic community and it is really, really worthy of consideration. Um, I loved this book uh, and I'm not, you know, a lot of card magic, you know, I don't really love to be honest, but this is really, really worthy of consideration. So if you're going to read one book over the next year, consider this book, Resigned to Miracles by Peter Groening. It's the only book that I'm going to review because there's always just, okay, there I'm crashing. There's always lots of great books out there. Um, I actually uh, spend probably more time on videos, but um, they're good and if you're gonna read one, how to get an extra signed duplicate card without your participant knowing about it and then what you could do with that I think is really awesome. All right, uh, next coming in at number nine is Omega by Max Major. Um, this wasn't terribly new in terms of um, concept and idea, but these cards are really good. And I think if you're a hobbyist or a professional, these cards are such a good quality. The teaching on it's really good and um, uh, worthy of consideration. Um, so uh, he's added some new technology or additions to the cards, uh, gimmicked cards that I think are really good. I um, use these cards on a regular basis and really like it. So Omega makes my list of top 10. Next, I'm gonna go to Solitude Extreme by Joel Dickinson and Alec Mitchell. Oh, uh, maybe I don't have it behind me. Um, but Solitude Extreme, I loved from a gimmick perspective, and I think this came out early in the year, so um, you'll have to probably go looking for it. It may not be on your radar screen. Uh, but the nice thing about Solitude Extreme, it's, uh, I think, Solitude Extreme 2.0 now that I think about it. Uh, I loved the gimmick. Uh, it is, you take a uh, pack of, um, sorry, a box of cards and on top of it you have a folded card that you start off the routine with. Then you of course have your spectator pick a card and you can even have them sign the card. And lo and behold, uh, at the end you show the card that's been there in plain sight the entire time. You simply take it off the box and it is the spectator's signed or chosen card. Um, I loved the construction of this gimmick. I thought it was very clever and um, I liked it if you're a creative type and you're looking at ways if you're a creator. Um, I think it's great in terms of um, thinking about how you construct things and put things together. Plus the effect is really good. All right, number seven is the gamble. Um, I suspect that a lot of people would never put the gamble uh, magic reviewers on their top 10 list would be my guess, um, because it is an old concept that's been used for more than 100 years. And other folks have put out very, very similar or almost identical products. Um, I like the gamble because I use it as everyday carry. It is poker chips that are carried around in a leather bag that's not like gimmicked or anything. It's a normal, nice carrying leather bag to carry around four poker chips that they provide that are really good, high quality. And essentially it's a prediction effect uh, where you give the spectator one of the chips, a specific color, and it doesn't matter what order that they pull the chips out of the bag randomly, uh, it will match the prediction. Super easy, no slights, great everyday carry, and every time I perform it, I always get a really good response. That is not what I expected when I purchased the product. I expected it might be kind of a throwaway, to be honest. Uh, when I purchased it, I think it was in Penguin's top 10 uh, trending um, uh, products at the time, so I thought I'd pick it up because there seemed to be some interest in it. And surprised me, a great, um, fun, simple, everyday carry uh, with no uh, sort of expertise that you need to do it. You should go check out the video uh, on that one. All right, let's next go to number six. Now, number six is Dreambox by Hota, right here. For me, if you are a worker, this is a great worker routine. The nice thing about it is it comes with really 
awesome props and um, using uh, postcards where you pick destinations, bands, and drinks. And at the end, um, they have a lanyard that they've been uh, having around their neck the entire time. And inside that lanyard is a printed um, smaller sort of postcard that has the three choices or four choices that they would have made. Also includes a celebrity. It's printed, it's really awesome, high quality, something that uh, goes into my professional set um, and uh, really a top-notch product for the, for the year. Um, really loved it. So it was hard for me in terms of it's at the number six position. Uh, it could easily go into a top three, to be honest. Um, okay, the next one is by Rick Lax the card that matters. And I don't have it even behind me here because I've been performing it uh, in the virtual setting uh, a fair amount. It takes the invisible deck and puts it on steroids. Uh, and I mean that. Basically you have a um, envelope, small envelope that can hold five cards. And the presentation is it's got five cards, it's a poker hand, only one card is turned up in the deck or in those five uh, cards, you ask your spectator to pick any card. Pick the card that matters, is sort of the language that they use. And the attempt to see how close your spectator can get to the card that is face up in the deck. Um, it's a worker, uh, really worthy of considering. It's everyday carry, packs super small because it's a packet trick. Um, and what you need to know is that um, they, other than the aces, they can pick any card that they want. And um, if they don't hit it exactly, uh, they are within one and it has a natural out for that. And I still think that some folks might like not like that. I find it's fine and I perform it a lot and get great reactions from it. Uh, so uh, Rick Lax, the card that matters, makes it into my number five or top five position. All right, let's take a breather for a second. We're now into our top four. If you have uh, spent any time in 2020, you've spent time in a pandemic. And so many uh, folks who work uh, magic have uh, ended up doing virtual shows. And people who don't perform uh, professionally have uh, upped their social media game and those sorts of posts. And if you have missed Adrienne Lacroix, you've been under a rock. Adrienne Lacroix has been doing amazing releases over the last year and all are worthy of consideration. This is the one that I purchased and um, I think is really good. It is at number four, Virtual Triumph by Adrian Lacroix. Um, if you're familiar with a what in Magic, what a triumph is, is basically you take cards and you mix them up, some up, some down, some up, some down throughout the entire deck so that they're mismatched all the way through. In this version, you have your spectator virtually through your Zoom show or however virtual you're doing it and have them do it with their own deck of cards. And you then demonstrate that you're able to get them all headed the same direction when just in a second you saw that they were uh, all mixed up. And then amazingly, the spectator's cards are also um, all perfectly aligned again happens in their hands it is really I think from a spectator point of view um, really fantastic because the magic is happening in their hands and especially done in the virtual space uh, really packs a punch so uh, Adrian Lacroix's virtual triumph a real worker and real winner uh, and worthy um, of a spot on any top 10 list um, next this is really one of my favorites, and it is at number three, Elsden. Of course, it's not quite Elsden, it's E-L-3 done, but it's uh, released by Mark Elsden. Um, this is a little bit different than my other picks in that it is real straightforward card magic. Uh, Mark teaches three different routines on here. Um, two of the routines are really, really super good because they're card magic. The third one that's a little iffy uh, is uh, one with a coin or an object and you have to guess within a group who has that coin. Um, another one is a prediction effect and I would say the closer is, uh, geez, I forget the name of it. It's like you make your spectator the star uh, of the show and they don't even know how they're doing the magic. Uh, again, I keep using the term, but this is a worker. Um, if you are working professionally, this is great. 
But if you're not and you're a hobbyist and you want really strong uh, card effects um, or throw in some mentalism, uh, this between the three routines is really, really good. Uh, and I don't want this overlooked for the year because it is a top-notch release from Mark Elsden. All right, um, at number two, I decided to go, and this was easy for me, um, it is the No Choice Wallet, and the No Choice Wallet is done by Tony Miller and um, Mark Mason. Mark Mason just puts out amazing effects, and I always feel good about his products. Uh, this one I love because basically you show a wallet, it is a wallet effect here, and in your wallet you um, have no choice, uh, is essentially the name of it, but you will have a prediction written on your um, uh, dollar or 20 or whatever you have in here, or your 100, and um, deck cards is chosen, or sorry, a card from a deck is chosen by your spectator. It is put in here uh, so that they can see it and then you reveal on your currency that you had written their prediction in advance. And then the kicker to it is, of course, that you reveal that all other cards, any other card that they chose was a blank card. Um, I love the effect. I think it plays strong. You don't have to do it with a blank deck. You can also just do it with a regular pack of cards uh, and you can come up with multiple routines. But I think this is a really strong uh, effect. The No Choice Wallet by Tony Miller and Mark Mason. Um, just a really good, solid effect. And of course, I have at number one, I have Hook, which I realized I should have pulled out. Uh, Hook by Eric Ross. Um, now, Hook, in my opinion, uh, I have a couple things with it. Hook is a roulette routine. You take a fishing hook that has three hooks on it, and you have uh, typically four strings uh, on, on it, and one of them is tied to it. You place the hook in your mouth, and you have your spectator, uh, one by one, pull a string, and hopefully are tugging on the one that is not tied to the fish hook and hopefully you end with only one final string that is left and you pull that out of your mouth to reveal that it is the only one that is actually tied to the hook and if they had picked it earlier of course it would have put a fish hook through your lips um, love the routine uh, relatively easy they have made it over at lost art magic uh, reduced the price it originally started off at a hundred dollars and I think as recently, I think I saw it as low as 25 US dollars. So the prices come way down, so it's way affordable. There's no gimmicks here. You're getting a real fish up that goes into your mouth. Um, I am kind of partial to it because it was the first review that I did this year when I started the channel uh, and didn't anticipate that it would be my favorite, but um, it is my favorite for the year um, in terms of, uh, I do think it is the, the best release that I personally got this year. Now, all of these are worthy that I just talked about. Um, so, uh, let me mention some other things. Um, I also, you know, if you're like, my no choice wallet is a good example of uh, using money. So, um, uh, if you're looking for like money and fake money that you're using, um, I always like to use Vice Props. Uh, Vice Props makes these amazing uh, money that uh, I use for my effects and carry them around with me, whether I'm converting, you know, money into um, uh, ones into hundreds or, or whatever it is. So um, vice props, money is always really good and worthy of consideration if you're looking at any money effects. I didn't have any money effects uh, that I use other than this one today, uh, but worthy of consideration. And if you go to vice props and you get something, you can always, uh, use my code there. I'll have it down in the description, which is Fiddle and Johnny. Um, you'll get 10% off there. Sounds like I'm doing a commercial all of a sudden there, but um, I do like to use Vice Props money. And if you're doing any effects where you use, uh, want to use fake money, uh, you can go ahead and uh, go there and use my code to do that. All right, uh, let me end by saying thank you everyone for coming to the channel this year. I hope you'll stick around. Uh, for this next year. If you're new here, I just started doing magic reviews uh, right towards the beginning of quarantine, back in March. 
And so um, this is a, you know, new channel relatively in March, it'll be a year old. And uh, I've been performing magic uh, my entire life, but professionally for years. And um, I really wanted to provide a channel where you would get uh, honest reviews. Um, I'm not sponsored by any of these products. I uh, purchase all of them uh, on my own. I've paid for them myself. And so there's no sort of bias from that respect. Uh, and you're getting my unvarnished opinion there. So that's it. I really appreciate it. And why don't I close out 2020 with a song. And as I'm closing out 2020 with a song, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Of course, it helps if my cords are not all wrapped, wrapped up. There we go. Let's turn it on. We're almost done. Here we go. See you next year, everyone. Bye-bye. Keep filling around with your magic.